Hi guys, thanks for joining in on my second online class. Um, today we're going to be painting from a botanical still life using gouache paints, but you can use whatever paints or materials you can get your hands on. So in the last class we were looking at some techniques on kind of getting familiar with the foliage we were using and getting um, familiar with actually just painting and drawing from botanicals, which is a really kind of grounding practice, which I use a lot to sort of just get me back into my rhythm and get me back into my practice. Today, I thought it would be quite fun to sort of inject a bit of our own personal style into our work that we're making. I think everyone has their own personal style. It's just about kind of finding it and having the confidence to go with it. So we're going to break the rules a bit and be quite playful with our mark making, be quite bold and just hopefully have fun with it. You're going to need to create your still life, which can be done at your kitchen table. I've sort of used a kind of tablecloth as a backdrop just to kind of create a bit of a, a scene, but there's absolutely no need to do that. You can, you can have it in front of you on the kitchen table. And I've used a kind of a bit of a variation. I've used some um, foliage, which I've sort of just grabbed from around the garden um, and the house and some grapefruits, which I had and a few bits of homeware. I like to have a mixture of homeware uh, foliage and then I find the orb of the fruit really interesting to kind of create a nice composition. I often use an orb, um, whether it's a moon or a sun or a kind of pomegranate in, in my paintings just because I think it kind of creates a bit of a focal point and brings a bit of strength into something that could be quite a soft floaty, floaty painting. So yeah, you're going to need some paint brushes, something to paint with, um, pencils are useful for just sort of lightly mapping things out and if you have none of those things just anything you can get your hands on it's just about being playful today and making some nice bold beautiful marks so I'm going to take you through a couple of steps on sort of how I might tackle this or how, how I might create a sort of a painting I'm going to start with one color I'm going to start with a, with a indigo blue and I'm going to do quite a bold quick line drawing not line drawing sorry line painting of this still life so because I'm using an easel, um, I'm not going to use a huge amount of water with my paintings. Like in the last class, we used a lot of water because we were co creating quite like uh, washy bleeding effects. But with this, because it's quite, I'm trying to sort of go for a slightly bolder, more playful look, I'm going to use quite undiluted brush strokes. Um, this is also just because I don't really want because it's vertical, I don't really want loads of drips. Um, but by all means, if you're if you're working at your kitchen table and you're on a flat surface, by all means, um, use some of the techniques um, with adding lots of water that we used in the last class because it's it can create quite a beautiful effect. So I'm going to start with um, with the bottle, with the blue bottle, just because it's quite a it's just quite a sort of focal point. And I'm going to pull in these um, orb shapes of the grapefruits around it. Don't worry about creating perfect circles. I find if you overwork a circle, it can look kind of quite elementary and just a bit forced. So um, it really doesn't matter if they're a bit skewer. Don't feel like you need to completely colour in everything as well. I kind of like w when the uh, paint comes away from the brush and creates quite like a, a sort of sparse look. So now I'm going to bring in this, um, this crystal vase with the violets in it. Sorry, they're not violets. I keep calling them violets. They're lilacs with the lilac in it. So I'm going to do this quite quickly. It's got these lovely, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's got these lovely crisscross um, elements in going along the side of the vase. To be honest, it, even if it didn't have these crisscross elements, I'd probably add something in just to give it a bit of more structure. So I'm going to draw in that lilac, which is drooping really nicely now. I'm going to 
swap to a slightly softer, rounder brush just to um, create these lovely kind of fl flowers, these kind of, I'm kind of doing them really roughly. Try not to get too bogged down with the kind of fine details. Um, there's a lot going on in this still life, so if you were to try and focus on absolutely everything, I think you'd, I think you'd, wouldn't really achieve anything particularly fluid or playful. I'm not going to overwork this area. You get the suggestion of what's going on without having to fill in actually everything. So next I'm going to take um, an even thicker, flatter brush because I'm going to pull in these, um, these artichoke leaves. There's a lot going on with them, a bit like the lilac. So I'm actually going to simplify them with my lines and do them quite quickly without kind of getting too bogged down with the fine detail and the, the sort of body of the plant. So I'm using a brush like this. which is quite thick and flat. See, I'm just using quite sort of squiggly lines here. It doesn't really actually look that much like a fern, but I think it just brings in that soft foliage that's kind of creeping around the edge. There isn't any coming in here, but I'm just going to add some ink because I think it kind of, I feel like it could do with it. And now I'm just going to add in this candle, which I was in two minds about putting it in, but I think I'm going to try it for this one. And I'm going to stop there because I actually think that's really quite effective and it hasn't got too much going on. What I might add, which I quite enjoy doing sometimes um, without getting too kind of bogged down with the detail is I might add some of the typography that's on the um, the bottle, the gin bottle. Don't worry if it doesn't really work as a readable word, but I think it kind of adds something in there. So now I'm going to draw um, quite a similar composition, but I'm going to um, inject some colour into it. I'm going to see how I go with the colours, and I might not use colours that are totally true to what's in front of me, but I'm going to start with that blue again to draw the, um, the bottle and the vase, because I just, it, I'm pretty addicted to this indigo colour actually. You'll see that I use it a lot in my work. Um, so here goes. Working in a slightly different way this time. Um, just having a little play around with brush strokes. So um, next I'm going to add in the, the beautiful kind of orangey, pinky, yellow of the pink grapefruits. So I'm going to go for another quite flat, quite flat, quite large brush. I'm going to use this, um, this amazing yellow okra colour, it's a gouache, but really whatever you can, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, I probably might add in some oranges later on just to kind of get that hue. I'm actually going to be really bold here and just put the paint straight onto the page. Yellow and blue are, are uh, directly opposite on the colour wheel, color wheel, so they are the most complementary colours you can use, really. Yellow and purple also looks amazing together. But yeah, I love using that, the, comp that, the um, combination of the two. Okay, so next I'm going to go back to that blue. And the reason I didn't add it in at the same time as the bottle was just because I wanted to get the, um, I wanted to get the grapefruits in because I thought they they were really strong and I kind of, after I put those in, I can then realise like what kind of, what kind of vibe I'm going to go for for the vase. And I'm actually going to use quite fluid wiggly lines for this. I think. The 
lilac I'm actually going to do in the same blue as before, just because I think it works really well. And even though I'm a big fan of purple flowers, I'm, I'm not right, it's quite difficult to create a purple paint, but by all means try. I often come up with a brown when I do it, so hence why I'm not trying in this tutorial. And also I just think this blue is just so fresh and bold. As you can see, I'm kind of just making this up as I go along. Don't forget that if you really don't like anything, you can just start again or no one's really, no one's going to hold you to anything here. Just have fun with it and see what happens. It helps to stand back and just check out what you're drawing properly. I'm going to add a few slightly more solid like leaves this time, which I didn't do in the last one. I think they could bring a bit of form in. Okay, and now I'm going to add in those, those leaves again. And I'm going to keep true to their colour and use a green. I'm using this really old <laughs> olive green that's really on its last legs. I still somehow managed to get colour out of it. Again, it's a gouache. All paints I'm using here are all gouache. So quite similar vibes to before, I'm just going to pull in these quite thick, bold lines to suggest the kind of ferny, frondy shapes. But I'm not going to think too hard. I'm just sort of like we went over in the last class because we kind of got to know the anatomy of these leaves we just understand that these leaves fall out in a certain rhythm and because we've looked at them and studied them you can kind of be quite quick with these brush strokes and they just about suggest a leaf <laughs> I might just do a few over here So this time I'm not going to add in the candlestick. Uh, I just, there was something about it the last time that I didn't really like and I just want to see what it looks like without really. But I can see that there's a lot of um, space at the top of this painting um, and we've got quite like a sort of white boring background on the still life scene. So I'm just going to play around and add some more leaves and a bit of colour to the top. I'm kind of making this up from my imagination, but here goes. I think it might be quite nice. I'm going to stop there because actually I think it's really simple. It might not be completely exactly what's in front of me, but I love it. And I think that overworking things is often a mistake. So I'm going to move on to the next. So um, here I'm actually just going to break the rules a bit and um, just change up the colours. I'm going to draw in the gunpowder gin bottle in, in a kind of orange. It's actually a Venetian red, which again is not completely on its last legs, but I absolutely love it. I'm going to go back in with the yellow for the grapefruit orb shapes, um, but I'm just going to try and use I'm going to try and use it in a slightly softer way just because this Venetian red has actually come out um, quite delicately. So here we go. And here I'm going to um, bring in those palm fronds before I actually draw that bottle because I haven't decided what I'm going to, not the bottle, the vase, I haven't really decided what colours I'm going to do that in yet, but I'm definitely going to bring in those lovely greens again for the um, the artichoke leaves. Again, I'm adding them in, in places where they're not necessarily ah, oh, but I just sort of going with going with the flow. Um, and I've decided I'm going to go back in with that Venetian red for the vase. 
and also for the lilac. I'm using thicker daubs here. But again, I'm sort of just making it up as I, as I go along. And in the first piece we did, I actually really liked the typography element in it. So I'm just going to kind of do a nod to that. And instead of adding a candle, I'm going to add in a lid. I feel like this is a really summary picture and the top area here is really sparse and obviously it would work as a landscape picture but I'm just going to really kind of shake things up a bit. I'm going to add in a sort of orangey, yellowy a sun. I've mi I mixed that, with that Venetian red and that lovely yellow that, we, that we've been using not think too hard. Um, and then, because I'm kind of missing that indigo blue, which I seem to be completely addicted to, I'm just going to pull in some sort of foliage shape here, just to kind of give it a little bit of balance. And I'm going to stop there, because I think that's kind of a very simple, very playful, kind of quite naive little painting we've got there. So there we go, those are my sort of three steps of creating a fun, playful, bold, summary still life. I hope you enjoyed it.